guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Pug Time by Cesium Games. It's for two to four players, takes about 15 to 25 minutes to play, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game Pug Time, you're going to be basically placing cards down uh, on your tableau and simultaneously flipping them, and then resolving them in the order from least to then greatest. Uh, you're gonna have your own unique pug, and there's a bunch of little cute pugs in this game. You're gonna have the garbage pug, and the, the fast pug, the strong pug, and so on and so forth, which you can use their abilities too if you play the right cards. And you're basically trying to gather certain tokens, whether it be, what, are they playing? Treats? Uh, playing treats, and I believe sleeping. Yeah, so there's three different types. You need to get 12 of them. But you also need to have three of each as well. So there's the nine specific ones, and then there's three of any other type you'd like. And if you can get that before any other player, you're gonna win the game. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look into the game here. Kelsey I actually came over and we're doing our first review here with her. Uh, and that was the, one of the first games you actually ended up playing was Pug Time along with a couple yeah. other ones. And so she's gonna come back for the review portion of the game and uh, tell you guys what she thinks along with my critiques and uh, praises as well. All right guys, you ready? Let's go ahead and show you the game Pug Time. So here's Pug Time and everything included in the game. You get the box for the game. You're also gonna get all the different pugs, and there's about eight of them, along with your player reference cards, which you'll be utilizing. It tells you the basics of the game as well as how you play it. And you're also going to be getting a deck of cards. These decks of cards are gonna involve adventure cards, treat cards, basic cards, and uh, the ever dominant disaster cards, the dangerous ones you can play on other players to mess them up. It's not necessarily a take that game, but it has a little bit, a smidgen thrown in as well. Uh, you're also gonna get all the different tokens there, whether they be sleeping or treats or playtime. And of course, those are what you need to win the game, along with a rule book for the game. That's pretty much what you're getting in the game, Pug Time. Uh, let's go ahead and take you down below. I'll show you how to play at least two players, and then we'll give you our thoughts on the game. Pug time. So here we have the game Pug Time all set up, uh, but not for any players. We'll go ahead and show you what's in here first. Of course, there's all the different pugs and your treats are all lined up, and then you've got your cards and your rule book and all that. We're going to give every single player a guide to pugging because pug life is difficult and then we're going to go ahead and give each player a pug and the way we do that is we take them all and we shuffle them and then we deal them out they have their numbers in the top right hand corner which will be in reference to stuff that happens in the game sometimes you'll be utilizing their abilities and when you do you're going to be using this number as reference remember it's always going to be from the lowest number to the highest number for priority so let's go and look at the pugs first of all there's the fast pug randomly steal one card from each opponent if the stolen card type matches matches a card type in your hand, you get to play both and add all unplayed stolen cards to your hand. So he's basically able to steal stuff. Or we're gonna look at maybe the Brave Pug. Move all the disasters to the Brave Pug. Uh, yeah, sorry, move, yeah, move all the disasters to the Brave Pug. All disasters on your uh, last, all, all disasters on you last until the end of the round. Count discards. So it's just basically, for each disaster you have on you, you're going to get bonuses and whatnot. You're going to get bonus tricks and bonus uh, uh, basics and whatnot. And then, of course, if you get even more disasters on, you can discard all disasters and earn a token of each uh, in each area. So you get one of each of these three. Disasters are normally bad, but the Brave Pug likes to deal with disasters in a positive light. Hard to read upside down. Sorry about that. So we'll go ahead and take all these guys here. We'll shuffle them up, and then we're going to go ahead and deal them out to the players. We'll just have two players here to show you how the game works. I'll put it like that, I suppose. Then, after that, you're going to move all the rest of the pugs. We won't be needing them. You'll take these cards here in this deck and make sure you shuffle it all up really nice. And then you're going to deal out four cards to each player. The cards are going to be all different types of cards. One more. And uh, they're going to have the numbers as well. Some of them are going to be basic. Some of them are going to be buried. Some of them are going to be special. So they have all the different types. But the objective of the game is to get... Uh, three of each of these types, and then three more of any type. So 12 total tokens. And what you're gonna do is look at the cards in your hand, then you're going to go ahead and place one down along with everybody else at the same time. And after that, everybody's played their cards, you're going to flip them over. When you flip them over, you're gonna resolve them based on the numbers. The lowest number being resolving first, and then the highest number resolving last. Now, both of these are the same number, and when that happens, you're going to resolve them at the same time. So this player is gonna get one eating token, which is one of these little symbols, the pizza. Put that 
on uh, your pug, which is for some reason upside down. Oh, that's because I didn't flip him over. <laughs> and then this player over here is going to get a sleeping token. This is my little sleepy cute pug. And then after that, these cards are going to go. Fill your player's hands back to four. And then once again, look through your hand and start playing things. Uh, let's go ahead and play this one here. And then we'll go ahead and look around. Let's see what else we can play. We'll play this one over here. And then we're going to flip again. We have a two and a 12. This one here is a buried card. You can play one card from your hand or bury one card. Burying a card will let you use it for later. So you can go ahead if you want to and play something else, like maybe this guy here, and you're gonna resolve that card in the order. So this is 11, so you're gonna gain a sleeping token. This player here is going to gain a token in any area, so maybe playing. And then once again, the cards are gonna go and you're gonna fill your hand size back again. And you're gonna continue playing the game. Uh, eventually, you're going to get the tokens and that's how you're gonna win the game. It's after you've flipped, you're gonna resolve to see if anybody has won the game. If that happens, the game happens the game is over. There's other cards, like this one here is a treat, which allows you to use your pet's ability. You're going to simply do it based on the number. So this, in this case, this pug is going to go first for its ability if he played this card. And in this case, it would be a 10, which means it may be a little farther down the line, depending on what other cards have been played. Um, and let's go ahead and look at some other cards as well. There's disaster cards. If one of these guys gets flipped up, just like, just like in any other order, it will be played. And this is going to go on another player to the side. Whenever a player achieves a token, of that type, this card will be removed and that token will, instead of going to him, go to the other player who played it. So disasters can be very beneficial. Once that happens, these cards are then discarded. There's other cards like the basic ones, which will simply give you so tokens as you play them. Trick tokens, which are a little bit of press your luck. This one says you get two eating tokens if no other owner has gained eating tokens earlier in this round. And this is a 13. So it's likely that players could have gained eating tokens. And if they did, then it's going to be lower. But if you don't, if they don't, you're going to get two tokens, which is pretty useful, right? Uh, here's another one. You get gain a one in any area. There's the one that does, does abilities. You can have these buried ones, which will allow you to play one card from your hand or bury a card, which is pretty useful as well, and so on and so forth. They all do different types of things. There's also adventure cards that will have, have different requirements as well. Here's a simple one. This one says you can play the rest of your hand. Very, very powerful. And you, of course, are going to follow them in the order that they are stated in. And uh, that's pretty much the game. You're going to keep drawing up to four. Everybody plays one. Everybody flips. Resolve it from lowest to highest and then if no one's won, continue playing the game up until the point somebody gets those 12 tokens. And when that happens, the game is over and you have now achieved Pug Life. All right, let's come up and me and Kelsey will explain what we thought of the game Pug Life and whether or not you should pick it up. All right, time for some caveats. Caveats for our game Pug Time. I think I was calling it Pug Life. It, it, it's Pug Time. I get, 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 a little, get a little flustered and crazy when it comes to pugs, all right? Uh, first of all, remember that these little cards here, these uh, provolone cards, whatnot, they're all called treat cards. They're going to let you play your pug's ability. And I said it before, but just in case so you remember, when you play the card, it's going to be based on the number on your pug as opposed to on the top of this. And it actually has a little star, so you'll probably know that. The trick tokens are push your luck. The adventure cards have some type of ability and they also can be very powerful. Buried cards will let you play cards for later or play a card from your hand. And then the basic ones will give you simple tokens straight up. It's a place, you're, play, you're basically just placing cards down, flipping them up, simultaneous action, and resolve. And then see who wins. So let's go ahead and do our review now. You ready? Sure, yeah. Okay, so the first thing is artwork. We'll start with artwork. What do you think about the game's artwork? I actually think it's really cute. Like, I like the different pugs. You know, it's for garbage pug. Like, he's actually in a garbage can. It's different. Um, I like the pugs. They're just, they're cute. Yeah, it makes it's, you want a pug. It's got cute artwork, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's done well. Would you say that the artwork is for, is kid friendly? Is it? Is it, it is. Yeah. It's definitely kid friendly. Um, any, any pug I mean, owner is probably going to want to yeah, pick this one up. Yeah, the game is meant for, like, you know, nine-year-olds up. Um, so it's, it's friendly. It's. It's colorful, it's friendly, it's inviting. Yeah, no, I would agree as well. I, I would also agree with the artwork. I really enjoyed the little pugs and whatnot. This is instantly, it reminds me of kind of like a cat game, how it's just like, it's going to fit that audience or corgis, right? There's just a certain yeah. type of people that are going to enjoy these type of mm -hmm. games. And it, I'd be just preaching to the choir as for saying, oh, pug lovers, you're going to really like pug time because it, it's it's already a game it's specifically for you. It's title. You're going to buy it. And, okay, and, and let's talk about mechanics now, the mechanics of the game. We're all playing cards down. We all flip them up it's simultaneously straightforward uh, and they're all pretty simple to understand the one thing that got me a little confused was disasters it doesn't say if they go away after the token has been given yeah. or if it stays or not so it's like little uh, rules bits and pieces that I'm just like I don't know if that's how it works but I think it works it makes sense this way yeah. so this needs to be a little cleaned up now this is of course a prototype and so because of that the pieces and all that are not 
fully done yet so I'm gonna expect it to be changing as the process goes along and after it funds it'll look a lot better but just that one that one thing was one thing I really noticed about it but otherwise it's really easy playing cards yeah. right I mean what do you think about the game you've never actually played I mean, a game like this, this is the first time yeah, you played a simultaneous this game this super easy um, I do like that you know if you are playing with you know more than just two players I like that it get, you get to just switch up the order so if you're playing with three players typically you're gonna have the same person going second every single time you play this game switches that up so it makes it a little bit more I guess of a chance game it changes things and you, well it's yeah. not a chance because you can choose to play lower cards or higher exactly. cards right you can choose I'm gonna go I want to go first I'm gonna play this but two card. just because you play a one or a two does not mean that the next person the person next to you is gonna play that exactly so and if they do play the same it. time the same numbers exactly. they're going to go at the same time although a lot of games usually what it does is it goes around in a circle and then after the circle hits then the next player after the first player is actually the first player yes. and that's kind of how it resolves so it's kind of straightforward and static yeah. But at least it's most of them do do that, and I like that way better. But yeah, this one is, is because it's simultaneous and it's it's kind of an unknown as to what you're doing. I like that aspect of the exactly. game as well. I played a couple games like this one, and this one meets the basic requirements for that type of a simultaneous action and then flipping and resolving. I've seen it done, but there is unique aspects to this game, and that is going to be the treats, the the playtime, and then the sleeping. You need to gather as many as you can of each type up exactly. to 12 and make sure you get three of each which is cool i like that uh component as well i game. like the added yeah it gives you an extra something instead of just having a hand of cards it gives you an extra something to play with and i like that i like that it's not just one component to the game yeah these these little cards here these little um oh i can't remember the name of it now player reference cards player yeah. reference very very simple to understand this this is really how i learned the game more than even the rule book mm -hmm. it was it was that was what really did it for me and they have cute titles i like i like the guy it's called a guide of pugging or guide to pugging yeah like i like that they use they made a game about pugs and they use pug pug and life like, ain't easy it's, it's throughout the instruct the the instructions like it's everything there's pug in at least every sentence. There's and so many different pieces awesome. of artwork. There's so many pieces of artwork. It really does bring out the life of the animals that mm -hmm. you're playing with. And they all have their own unique abilities and their own unique, uh, everything kind of flows. The flavor of the game yeah. really works. Sometimes you see games that are like kind of painted on themes. And this one's actually not that not the case. This one is really cool because you're playing as these animals and you're choosing, do I want to take them for a walk or do I want to give them food or is he tired? And you have to fulfill all of the needs of the animal, but it's also very simple so little kids can play this game. Now that being said, uh, as far as the strategy goes, this is probably not for like the hardcore gamer. This yeah. is going to be one of those family type games exactly. for kids. Uh, it does play well, I would imagine, with with those type of gamers as well. I can't see them objecting to playing a game like this, no. but is it gonna burn through, is it gonna burn their retinas and their brain and their mind? You know, it's not gonna boggle the senses. It's very, very straightforward. Play the numbers, flip them up, lowest to highest, win the game if you exactly. have that you need, which is which is fine. Uh, would you Who would you suggest playing this game other than of course, Pug Lovers? I mean, this is, it's a family game. It's not, just like you said, it's not really something that a hardcore like board gamer is gonna play. Um, at least not without playing with with the with family, family or, or with with grandma or with you know with the twelve year old. Which is nice too, because grandma yeah. can play this game very easily. It, it, yeah, it, I don't you think know. you're. I don't think grandma's gonna disapprove this game. No, it will not be grandma. It will not be not not safe for grandma. That's for sure. But overall, I really really enjoyed this game. It was a lot of fun. And it's, I, I'm waiting for the uh, full version to be released, and I want to see um, if what the changes they make, if if if, if any. Uh, maybe just a few clarities, but yeah. but I mean, otherwise it's explained. In you, you understand the game, I'm sure, just based on my little walkthrough, because there's not a whole lot that I have to complain about. It's a super simple game, and it has some really cute little aspects as well. Um, it's always nice to see the games get fully done after the prototype and see how how gorgeous they look. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and uh, take a look at Pug Time down below in the description. We'll have that available for you to do and check out. Any last words about Pug Time? I don't think so. It's a great game. All right, outro time. All right, guys, thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review of the game Pug Time, which I'm now with my cute little definitely pug Dante. Uh, if you're interested, go ahead and take a look down below, like I said before, in the description, as well as at liking, subscribing, and hitting that little notification bell up there at the top so you can see more of our videos here on Unfiltered Gamer, as well as take a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Dante, you're not bored. You're very excited about this video continue <laughs> and go ahead and take a look at the game we're giving away which is currently called dogs 
how dog day, but not my dog. This is my dog. The game is just dogs. If you're interested in picking that up, you can go on the website and get it. <gasps> what are you doing, you crazy dog? All right, guys, that's all I got this time. And as always, I look forward to a play with some pug life and you next time. Say bye, Dante. Say bye. <laughs>